Now, first of all, hello and welcome again. <coughs> I'm going to do a video today focusing on low tension ignition and um, just focusing basically on the principles and how it works. And so first of all, what I've got here on the bench is a Bosch Magneto, or some people would call it a Magneto, but it's technically only a generator. Now with low tension ignition, the low tension is referring to the fact that the voltage is a lot lower, you're not throwing a hot spark with it. It's only, you can prob when if you put a multimeter on it, you only sort of would rate about an average of 6 volts. Now it, can, it will peak higher than that, but a, a multimeter won't catch the peak. Now anyway, so this Bosch Magneto is basically just a generator. It could work as a rotary <coughs> generator, but in this instance it's set up to work as a, a flick off the uh, cam shaft of an engine where they'll have a cam that'll stretch it and when it's ready to fire it will release off and as it trips, that, as you can see in here, will turn the coil and will switch the poles, causing a voltage which will then be transferred to igno an igniter. Now I'll talk about the igniter in a minute. So they're pretty basic. You have your magnets, you have your... Oh, hopefully you can see that on the camera but you have your magnets here and then in the middle here you can see the part that rotates is the coil now the coil on these instead of a high tension coil having a primary and secondary winding on a low tension magneto or generator it only has a single winding and it does not have a condenser or capacitor as you could call it. You, now they're very basic most of the time in the bearings they normally in this instance you can see that's just a plain bearing which is captured hopefully the camera will pick this up captured in this end plate and they've got a slight taper and you can hopefully see some grooves for the oil and you have to oil them regularly in the little oilers. They're a very early, they're an earlier form of uh, magneto for most engines and and that at the time. Now you can see here, this is the brush, and that's the pickup that takes it through the end cover, which you might be able to see down the end and you can see here that that's insulated this probe here is insulated which connects with that brush and so the voltage is transferred from the coil which picks it up from the magnetism and the coil rotating in that magnetic field it comes from the coil through this brush gets picked up and this lead takes it to the igniter and the igniter is what throws the spark so to speak which will create a circuit back to the ground which this is grounded to the engine the igniter is grounded to the engine and that creates the last part of the circuit they're, they're fairly basic to look at to in the way of fixing you only have one coil that you have to worry about as to whether or not it's got a, a breakdown in the windings or it's had any damage. Normally I've found the most common problem is the magnets getting weaker and in this case this magneto has to get the magnets re-magnetised in it. But anyway, so I'll um, change the camera and we'll take a look at an igniter. Now this is an igniter, now just like with the uh, Maggie, there's many different sort of types and they all change a bit from engine to engine but the principle basically stays the same just with the generator now this 
this section here of the igniter is inside the combustion space of the engine and this side is on the outside and that is the connection to the magneto and then this is the connection to the to the moving the moving points now the magneto doesn't have the points in it these are the points which are inside the combustion space which allow you to overcome compression issues related with low voltage high tension magnetos have to have a high voltage and a condenser to help overcome the compression in an engine to throw a spark whereas by having the points inside the engine that allows for low voltage now they're fairly basic the probe that doesn't move is the one that has the voltage to it from the generator the voltage output and you might be able to see there's some washers that continue the length of the probe through here and they insulate it so that the only way for this to be grounded is to be in contact with this point now in the engine they sit together closed until the magneto pulls back ready to fire and as it releases it will just trip these points briefly which opens them and the spark will be thrown between between the two points now with the generator for it to throw a spark you've got to get it you've got to keep these points shut so that it'll generate a voltage and then just as the magnetic field changes on the coil the points must open and that will throw the spark that from the voltage the generator produces at the um, at the peak in the magnetism now they do there's two main sort of types of igniters now on these two are off a hornsby engine and they are at stationary they kept closed now there are also igniters that are called make and break igniters and they are open and they are normally connected to a battery with a small low tension coil something that will just build up a residual voltage and as the engine comes along there's normally a push rod which will work on the moving point of the igniter and it will first of all close it for a brief couple of seconds before it, it itself trips which will spring the points back open throwing a spark but because it's low voltage there is not enough voltage there to hold the spark so it will not continually arc it will just cease to make a circuit which saves on your battery now I can show you how to time a generator and igniter like this on a Hornsby engine which is quite sim similar to any other igniter of this type with a flick magneto or generator as you could call it I'll um, zoom the camera in on my Hornsby engine to just demonstrate some of the key timing fields now hopefully you can see the clear detail here I'm not sure how well the camera will pick it up but you can see here at rest the magneto is the spring straight up and down and the core of the coil will be vertical between the magnetic fields which is where it is at rest you can see here that the igniter the, the trip on it is not quite touching this magneto arm that will trip it which is key in timing these now you can also note here that this is this arm here picks up on this cam down here now I'll just hopefully I'll just rotate this engine a, a bit and you'll be able to see how the cam 
hopefully you can see that how that has now lifted this arm across priming the magneto which has rotated the coil into one magnetic field and you can see here the gap between the the trip arm and the igniter keeping the igniter closed so that it'll create a circuit to generate now I'm not sure how well the camera will pick it up but I'll take it through a cycle and you'll see when this arm trips and you'll hopefully see it just flick these points Yeah, hopefully you caught that and that's just how you time it on the engine so as soon as it trips away from the cam it will fire <coughs> not long after that like nearly instantly however there is a slight delay which must be considered when finally tuning your engine however with these Hornsby's and this stepped cam you have a retard and advance mark as to how late or early it drops it off and with the retard mark you normally set it so that as soon as you hear the flick the engine should be at top dead center so it cannot fire backwards and break your arm potentially now just as it flicks it'll trip these points and it should throw a spark inside the engine a few common problems I've seen as to why it won't run and is mistimed to, to some degree is to do with the spark timing between the magneto and the igniter which comes down to you need a tiny gap at rest so that the igniter is shut in this case but it needs to also not be too great a gap so that when this trips it will hit lifting those contacts and throwing a spark it's fairly basic now with some motors that have the make or break the make and break igniter they have an arm that'll come through because these are already open to start with it will shut them and then the arm will trip off throwing a spark before the points return to their open position as I described on the igniter beforehand now you can run these igniters with a battery and coil or with a rotary generator as long as you have some form of tripping them if your magnetos died and you want a, a quick repair in the field or something like that hopefully I'll get a chance to make a video on a make and break igniter but I'm not sure when I'll, I will get that chance if you have any questions please feel free to contact me and I'll try and, and better describe it I, I know I, I don't always describe things quite as clear as or some people need it just describe that bit differently to understand it but uh, hopefully I can try and help you out these igniters do tend to baffle a few people but they are fairly basic and you can repair them as well quite often it's the insulation that breaks down on the non-rotating probe and they are just a mica washer that insulates it and the other thing is to just make sure that the the contact between them is clean so just like cleaning the points on a regular magneto or in your car etc hopefully that'll just shed some light on a few things for a few people that haven't had experience with igniters and low tension magnetos before and as I, I said before I'll try and get a video with a make and break igniter and possibly I'll also try and get a video showing a battery and coil set up for a low tension igniter instead of your battery and buzz coil which is used for high tension just a word of warning if you do use a buzz coil on an igniter like this it can burn the points out as they're not designed to sustain a high tension spark hopefully you enjoy this video and um, probably see you in the next one just thought for a
quick bit of bonus footage at the end. I'll give this engine a quick oil round and uh, see if we can fire her up for you. I'll just uh, chuck a bit of oil around it. Hasn't run since I think about January. This year was probably the last time I had a run, so it shouldn't take too much to fire it up, hopefully. See so, yeah, how we go. Just give the uh, carby a bit of a tick up, see if we've got any fuel left in the tank. Might have to put some more fuel in. Alright, so we've just had a quick oil around, let's see if she'll go. And there you go, she's away.